So you guys know about the state of the subscription economy already, not even including streaming services where so many new streaming services are popping up asking for your hard earned money to watch some content which you used to be able to just pay for and get. But pretty much everything is moving to subscription models as well, talking about software, to heated seats in cars, to even updates for your digital camera. And honestly, I don't think we're going to get away from this mounting subscription economy which we're now facing. I think people can do their best to be very judicious with the types of subscriptions they sign up for. I think we can be intentional with what we choose to subscribe to and what we choose to consume because we need to, because if we subscribe to everything, we're gonna have no money left. So today I wanna talk about four free options which you can use to access new media and it's legal and you can do it today. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer and I like to talk about simplicity, frugality, and ways to cut down on your technology usage, sometimes by using other technologies. So let's get into it. So the first option I talked about in one of my first videos on this channel, and that is buying a digital antenna. So you actually don't have to have a digital antenna. Apparently digital antennas are kind of a scam in themselves. Any antenna would do, but having an antenna on your TV nowadays, it still works. I thought antennas were long done, but antennas are actually alive and well, and you can get tons of channels depending on where you are. At my last apartment, I did a scan and I had like 30 different channels. I was getting ALF, I was getting Pawn Stars, American Pickers, Storage Wars. That was pretty much all I needed, honestly. Since I moved to the other side of town, suddenly I don't have any of those channels anymore and I have 10 other ones, a complete different selection. It's a lot more Canadian broadcasting, but I also get bigger broadcasts like the Oscars and the Super Bowl, and that's all for the one cost that I originally paid to get my antenna. I actually purchased a digital antenna and then had to get a box to convert the signal to analog to work on my old tube TV. Don't do something like that. Just plug that into the TV that you have and you're gonna be off to the races. To buy my antenna in the US, it's like 15 or 20 bucks. I think here for Canadians, it's like 25 bucks. It's not expensive. It is like the price of maybe two months of a streaming service and you're gonna have TV for as long as they broadcast signals. And I think that's gonna still be for a very long while. So I think that's a very worthwhile investment if you wanna stay up to date with actual live broadcast television. Okay, so option number two where you can easily get new media free, legally, and today is going to be Tubi TV. So I'd heard of Tubi TV from other frugality YouTubers in the past, but I've kind of passed it over, honestly, because I thought, I mean, it's free, but it's like full of ads. Like, it must not be good TV because like, if it was anything worthwhile, any good films or shows, how would they be able to make money on this while also just selling ads? Like, I mean, Netflix and Amazon Prime, they are charging people a monthly fee and even they show ads to still make their bottom line. And apparently Netflix is losing a ton of money. So how could something like 2B TV have anything remotely good if they were able to make enough money off of just ads alone? Well, apparently that is all you need if you know how to manage a business appropriately because 2B TV has a lot of really good stuff on there. I encourage you to go check it out if you haven't before. I was so surprised by the quality of the media on here and the ads are not that intrusive at all. It's similar to the antenna, I guess, in the sense that the signal that you're getting, I'm not paying anything for that. So to watch a little bit of ads, if that means that that is going to be able to be broadcast in the future for free to me, then I'm kind of fine with putting up with a few advertisements in the meantime. And the same thing with Tubi TV. For the quality of the media that I'm actually getting through this platform, just to have to watch a few ads in between, that's not a big deal to me at all. So I'm just gonna list a few of the shows that I saw when I first glanced around Tubi TV, just to give you an idea of the types of shows that you can find on there. Because I don't know what I was actually thinking, but when I first heard about Tubi TV, I just assumed that it was stuff that I would have never heard of or never wanted to watch. And it's like, okay, you're gonna shove ads down my throat to watch some crap movie that like nobody cares about. But I actually think that there's some pretty good movies on here. They have the original Dune with Kyle MacLachlan and Sting. They have Starsky and Hutch with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. They have Happy Gilmore, that's a classic. They have Back to the Future, they have Demolition Man, they have a bunch of seasons of Top Gear. They have Van Helsing, they have Blade, they have King Kong. They have Van Damme's Lionheart. They have a really good selection of films, guys. So if you're willing to put up with a few ads, and I think you honestly should just to support this platform being free into the future, then you should sign up for Tubi TV and check it out. Okay, so the third place where you can find new media, both legally, free, and today, 
is your local library. So this is a bonus because your local library has a combination of both physical media and likely a streaming service, and they're both accessible to you for free. If you live in a smaller town with a more underserved library, you may not have as big of a selection available to you, but perhaps you still have a streaming service through your library if they're part of a larger group of libraries. So you should check that out to see if it's an option. In Toronto, where I live, there's a hundred library branches. So you can get books or movies or CDs or whatever it is, and you can get it from any of those libraries sent to your local branch for convenient pickup as well. Here, you can take out movies for a week. I think with TV shows, you can take them out for two weeks. They have so many DVDs, both of new releases and of classics, and even of tons of different TV shows. They're not gonna get the thing that just came out of the theaters right away. It might be six months to even a year before something like that comes into the library system. But if you can watch something that's six months to a year old now, then you can wait and the thing that's currently out will eventually show up in the library for you to watch for free. So if you're in a physical media, but you don't want the clutter that comes with having a huge collection of physical media, but you'd still wanna watch something like a DVD of your favorite TV show or movie, check out your local library to see if they have it in stock. I'll also mention that depending on where your library is, you may also have access to a streaming service through your library with a ton of good films on there as well. My local library uses a service called Canopy, which is a streaming service similar to something you'd see on Netflix or Amazon Prime, and it has a ton of different movies that I can watch for free every month. The way that it works is that you're limited to, I think, 16 or so movie tickets per month where you're able to then watch 16 titles that are on their streaming service per month with your library card for free. Again, I was surprised with the quality of films that was available through my library service at Canopy. I mean, the library is for learning. It used to be just for book learning, but now it's for a lot of different types of learning. And I find with the library streaming service that a lot of the films are kind of thought provoking, kind of smarter movies. A lot of Werner Herzog's films are on there. There's a lot of thought provoking documentaries. There's a very good two part PBS series called The Facebook Dilemma. The original Suspiria film is on there. There's a really good country documentary from the 70s called Heart Worn Highways that features Towns Van Zandt. That film's on there as well. I really recommend that one. And there's also stuff like the TV series Alone, which is a super cool show if you like survival. So do not sleep on your local library. Seriously, go check it out. Okay, so the fourth place that I recommend that you visit more often if you're looking for new content, free and legally, today, is YouTube. I know, you're on YouTube right now, you're watching this on YouTube, but seriously, I just wanna highlight how wonderful of a platform YouTube is. I'm not trying to simp to YouTube or anything like that, but I do truly appreciate YouTube. I've got so much value out of it over the years. YouTube is the second most visited website on the internet, aside from Google. I don't hear the term thrown around as much as it used to be, but people call YouTube, YouTube University for a reason. You can learn so much being here on the platform. I watch for both entertainment entertainment and inspiration when I consume YouTube myself. Some of my favorite channels are Cheap RV Living. I like to watch Bob Wells over there talk about his nomadic philosophy as well as interview other people living on the road. I love Forresty Forest, who's a fellow Ontarian, now living all around North America in his camper van with his dog Rocco. He does tons of mountaineering expeditions and things like that, and a lot of slow cooking in his van. He is honestly a master of the slow cooker. You should check that channel out. I've mentioned Sean James from My Self-Reliance before as well. I really like his channel. He talks about obviously self-reliance, homesteading, and he actually shows in extreme detail him building an off-the-grid homestead by hand. For Frugality, I love watching the channel Under the Median. Hope and Larry are a super wholesome couple. Their channel is so inspiring and their tips are very useful. It helped motivate me through and through as I paid off my debt when it was really a tough thing for me. I also love According to Nicole, who is a fellow Canadian YouTuber speaking specifically to frugality and minimalism. She is super funny. I love her frugality tips and the way that she delivers it. Her scam series that she has is one to watch. And the fact that all of this is available to us for free is definitely something to appreciate and not take for granted. Just like Tubi TV, YouTube's available with ads, but I still think that that is a very good deal for us, given that more streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime are moving to a level where you still have to pay monthly for their services, but you have to watch ads as well. So that makes sitting through some ads on YouTube for free seem like a pretty good deal, I think. So that's it for today, folks. Just four of my favorite places where you can get new media free, 
legally and today. So what did you guys think of this video? Are you guys using any or all of the things that I mentioned? I mean, I know you're using YouTube, but what about the other things I mentioned? Is there a service that I didn't mention in my video today that you've been benefiting from? Shout it out in the comments section. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.